All right. So we're talking about Acts chapter six. And if you have not, um, if you didn't see last week, Pastor Exica, she talked about uh, Acts chapter five. And I'll just recap for a minute. And it was about the apostles. They received boldness, um, you know, and they faced many trials. Right. But they were also strengthened as they went out and continued preaching the word. So we are in chapter six tonight, and it's a little bit of a shorter chapter, but I believe that there's still some good stuff in here. So we're going to go ahead and jump right in and um, read it together. So it says, but as the believers rapidly multiplied, there were rumblings of discontent. The Greek speaking believers complained about the Hebrew speaking believers saying that their widows were discriminated against in the daily distribution of food. So the 12 called a meeting of all believers. They said, we apostles should spend our time teaching the word of God, not running a food program. Okay, so let's pause right there. So we have a group of believers, all from different backgrounds. You know, the church is still developing. And so we have different backgrounds. We've got different languages, different ethnicities. And what they are experiencing are some good problems, right? So they're growing. And um, what they're experiencing is we have one group that's saying, hey, our widows are being neglected and not cared for as much as others. So the apostles, they're the leaders at this time, are saying, okay, this is important. We hear you, but we can't do it. So, you know, the saying, see a problem, be the solution, right? <laughs> I love that saying. So if you have a, a problem and you bring it to your leaders, bring the solution as well. Okay, let's keep going. Verse three, and it says, and so brothers, select seven men who are well respected and are full of the spirit and wisdom. <clears throat> we will give them this responsibility. Then we apostles can send, spend our time and prayer and teaching the word. And I liked this, you know, I liked that it said, I highlighted this in verse three, when it says, who are well respected and full of the spirit and wisdom. So what are they looking for? They're looking for people who are spiritually mature, people who can handle the responsibility, right? Um, so they selected seven people to do that. Okay, so let's keep going. And I let me just throw this disclaimer out there. I am not a Bible scholar, okay? I'm just a woman of God here to share the word of God with you tonight. So if I pronounce some things wrong, just bear with me, forgive me, let it slide, okay? Um, we're all learning together. So in verse five, it says, everyone liked this idea and they chose the following. Stephen, a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit. Now we're going to hear more about Stephen at the end of this chapter. Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon or Timon, Parmenas and Nicholas of Antioch, which is an earlier, who is an earlier convert to the Jewish faith. Okay. Then it says, these seven were presented to the apostles who prayed for them as they laid their hands on them. I highlighted that as well. So if you want to highlight that, go ahead. So God's message continue, continued to spread. The number of believers greatly increased in Jerusalem, and many of the Jewish priests were converted too. So what do we have? We have these men. They were, they were presented to the apostles. The apostles then prayed over them, and I loved that it said that they laid their hands on them. So when I look, when I read read that, and if you want to highlight and you want to go back and do more digging, please feel free to. But what I think of it is in this moment is not only impartation, but a passing of the baton. Like, okay, we're going to pray for you, but now it's your turn to go out and do the work. Now it's your turn to go and make disciples. It is a physical act that they did. And it shows 
something significant, right? It shows it as being something significant. Um, okay. Let me look, double check my notes. I, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Um, another thing that I underlined was many of the Jewish priests in verse 7. And I thought that was interesting because it says that they were con converted, which didn't seem very unlikely in that time, right? That a priest would be co converted and believe that Jesus was their savior. So I wanted to look into that more. So I highlighted that for next time or, or to go deeper in my word or in my time studying the word. So if you want to circle that, highlight it, go for it. But what I love about this first part of chapter six, verse one through seven, is that we can truly see an example of leadership take place here, right? We have the disciples, or I'm sorry, the apostles going out, they're preaching and teaching and sharing the gospel of Jesus. And then when they are presented with a problem, what do they do? They don't ignore it and hope that it resolves itself. They don't just try to fix it and, you know, then are, are burned out because they're not only preaching and teaching, but they're also trying to take care of physical needs of everybody. They empower and equip others, right? Because we saw that they laid their hands on them and prayed for them. So they empowered and equipped others to do the work, to care for those people. So they're discipling them. They are becoming the church. Is this hitting with anyone tonight? Let me know. It's so, it's so weird being live. Usually I, I, you know, I've got some feedback. So tonight I'm reading the feedback, which is so good. <laughs> it's different, but it's good. Um, but I wanted to go back and speak to verse two just a little bit when it says, um, we should, we apostles should spend our time teaching the word of God, not running a food pantry. Okay. And I know, I know that there are a lot of negative people out there. So we've got some naysayers that may be like, well, their priorities are out of line. Um, you know, why are they so busy preaching the word, but they can't take, take care of the physical needs of the, the poor or the hungry, right? But this is why, and you may be saying this about the, tr the place that you're in right now, but this is why it's so important to be involved in your local church, to be rooted in your church, because everybody has a purpose. Everybody has a talent. Everybody has a gift that God has given them. And we need you all to rise up and do those things because the pastors and the leaders of your church cannot do it all. They are on assignment from the Lord, and that is to preach and teach the word of God. And we need everybody else to come in and rise up and do what they are called to do. Okay. And I, even if you're not in ministry, right? I'll, everybody has a secular job almost. If ministry is not your job, that does not disqualify you from going out and making disciples. That does not disqualify you from doing what God has called you to do. There is something that Pastor Mike said a while back, and I wrote it down, and I want to just share it with you. And he said, take your season right now in life, whatever it is, plus your gifting, and that is your assignment. Okay? So your season right now in life, plus your gifting, that is your assignment. You may be saying, my, my season right now, I'm, I'm too busy to commit to anything. Um, I've got family, I've got work, I've got um, volunteer work, whatever it is. Okay, you've got family. All right, great. We all have a family. If you don't, you may, you should someday, <laughs> you know, you might someday, but I get it. I get it. I've been there. So what you can do is whatever your gift is, if you are gifted in, if you're a musician, if you can sing, if you are, if you prophesy, whatever it is, take your family with you. Okay, kids, we're going to go to the grocery store. And if you feel the need to share Jesus with someone, like, let's do it. Let's start practicing that. Let's start praying at home and, um, you know, 
learning about the word of God. And then when we go out, we can evangelize to people, right? If you, if your gift is musician or singing, whatever it is, whatever your season is in life, find a way to make your, um, your, your gifting work for you in that season. And that is what your assignment and seasons change and assignments change. But that, that does not mean that you don't have an assignment. Everyone has an assignment. Okay. Oh, I got to get a drink of water. So, <laughs> oh, you guys are being so nice to me today. I love this. Everyone's saying amen, amen. Yes. Someone said, <clears throat> just a smile can make a difference. And I believe that. I believe that people can see the love of Christ in you and on your face as well. Um, so people can see that out in public. But I want to go back to verse 7. And I want it, it says, The numbers of believers greatly increased in Jerusalem, and many of the Jewish priests were converted too. And I read something um, yesterday, and it said it compared it to um, a ripple effect on a pond. Each wave touches the next wave, and it spreads wider and farther, and farther than we can ever think or see. And I just thought that this was such a beautiful a picture of what we can do of when we share in our in our uh, circle of influence, right? We don't know who it's going to affect. And it just begins to be a ripple effect or like a domino effect. Come on now, we've got the domino revival movie coming out next week. I know this is exciting. If you don't have your tickets, get your tickets. Um, I believe that this movie is the first domino dropping and that this is going to be a catalyst to see the next great revival, but it starts with us, right? It's our part in, we have to do our part in sharing the gospel um, and in, and helping, you know, make that revival culture, right? You can lead your family in revival. We've got the holidays coming up. I think Pastor Mike even touched on this yesterday in his sermon. We've got the holidays coming up. Be bold. Be ha you have dominion. You have authority in prayer. So when you when you carry that authority, you can change the atmosphere in your home. You can change the atmosphere at holidays. You can change the atmosphere in your school place, in your workplace. You were born for such a time as this. Amen. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go into verse 8, and this is kind of the last part of chapter 6, and we're talking about Stephen, and this is the opening um, kind of scene. Stephen is arrested, okay, and we don't see a resolution for this conflict in this chapter. That is going to come next week with chapter 7, so I'm just going to go ahead and read. And it says, Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed amazing miracles and signs among the people. But one day, some men from the synagogue of freed slaves, as it was called, started to debate with him. They were Jews from Serene, Alexandria, Cilicia, and the province of Asia. None of them could stand against the wisdom and the spirit with which Stephen spoke. So we're talking about Stephen. He's doing all these signs and miracles among the people. And then a group of men come and they want to have a debate with him. But the Holy Spirit was with him and they were unsuccessful in, in challenging him, right? Okay, so let's keep reading. Verse 11. So they persuaded some men to lie about Stephen, saying, We heard him blasphemy Moses and even God. This roused the people, the elders and the teachers of religious law. So they arrested Stephen and brought him before the high council. So they didn't like, you know, they didn't like that they didn't win their debate. So what did they do? They went and stirred up trouble for him and started saying lies. And so then he was arrested. Okay. 
So verse 13, the lying witnesses said, this man is always speaking against the holy temple and against the law of Moses. We have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth will destroy the temple and change the customs Moses handed down to us. Okay, so these men, they said they recruited false witnesses to say that Stephen was speaking against the law of Moses and that Jesus was going to destroy the temple. And then the last verse of chapter six, I highlighted this and it said, at this point, everyone in the high council stared at Stephen at Stephen because his face became as bright as an angel. And I highlighted this because I wanted to do some more digging with this. Okay. What does that mean? His face became as bright as an angel. Does that mean that it's showing that God is living in us? We don't know. We don't know. So I I highlighted that to kind of go back in my um, study time and look into that some more. So what can we take from Acts chapter six? And again, we don't see a resolution here with Stephen. If you want we want you to tune in next Monday night at 6 30, 7 30 um, Eastern time. And you will hear that conclusion of Stephen. Um, but what can we take from chap from chapter six of Acts? What I have received from this is that your pastors and leaders can't do everything. They need you. We need you. We need your yes. We need you women to rise up and start using your gifts and your talents for the kingdom of heaven so that we can reach a greater harvest. Well, you may say, okay, well, how do I do that? If you don't have a church, join V1 Church, okay? Join V1 Church if you're not a part of of a church already. And then I want you to go through Growth Check, okay? Let's pause for a second and backtrack. We have so many different campuses um, for V1 Church around the United States. We've got revival homes. We've got an amazing global community, okay, with Pastor Natalie and Pastor Patrick. We love them. They do so well at stewarding global community. Um, So if you don't have a church, join V1 and then go through Growth Track. Learn about your church. Learn a, a how to steward the gifts that he that God has given you. And then join a connect group, right? And join a team and start serving your church. So that is a great way to start, okay? That's a great way to start. Um, and then, you know, disciples. We need to make disciples. Jesus said the great commission, go out and make disciples of all men. And this is something for all of us to do, not just pastors and leaders. And then also um, with Stephen, you know, I really looked at this and I was like, okay, so as Christians and Christ followers, we will not avoid conflict. We will not avoid persecution. But let me remind you that there is purpose in your pain. There is a cost to following Jesus. In 2 Samuel, uh, David says, I will not give God what costs me nothing. And that is one of my favorite verses because it's easily applied to every, 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 every area of your life, whether it's finances, your talents, your time, whatever it is. I will not give God what costs me nothing. And I love that so much. Um, what else do we did we get out of this? Yeah, so when you are faithful to persevere and when you're faithful to push past your pain, come on. Okay, so there are people waiting on the other side of your trial. There are people waiting on the other side of your testimony <clears throat> because you know what they need? They need to be able to say, Well, if God did it for them, I know that he can do it for me. And I'm going to cling on to their testimony. I'm going to cling on 
to what he did in their life because I know that he can do it in mine. So we need you to push past your emotions. We need you to push past what if you've got physical pain, we need you to push past that. We need you to push past your comforts. Okay. Push past your comforts and say yes to what he's calling you to. And when you do that, you, you will overcome and you will see a victory because you will have the Holy Spirit with you and you can do it through the Holy Spirit. Did this hit with anybody tonight? I know that this seems like a shorter word tonight. Um, let me know. Let me read some of these comments. I told myself I would not, I need to not go so fast. And I went right through it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, someone said me too. This is definitely one of the verses I live by, especially when my flesh flesh tries to get lazy. Yes. I love that so much. This is so good. Someone said such an on-time word. Susan said there's a cost to following Jesus. Yes. Amen. This is so good. Um, yes. So Tonight, again, push past your pain, push past your flesh, push past your comforts, okay? We need you. We need women of God to rise up in this hour. We need women of God to say yes to what he is calling them to do. We need women of God to help shoulder um, the calling, right? Everybody is called. You are all on assignment. You have a purpose. And that is really what I think tonight is about. You have a purpose. This is such a great reminder. Yes, Rachel said level up. That's what we're doing tonight. This is a call to level up. Okay. Yes, so good. Again, so if you want to um, finish... And I highly suggest you finish Stephen's story next Monday night on the broad broadcast. You can tune in at 6.30 Central Time, 7.30 Eastern Time. We love you guys so much. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I pray that you all have a great night. <laughs> and I will see you soon.